The scene in Ford's theater on April 14, 1865, is stamped in national memory. There was a gunshot. Then a second-rate actor jumped from balcony to stage, flashing a knife before the footlights, shouting. Lincoln, fatally hit, slumped in a chair. Rage at the Union victory and hatred for the president drove John Wilkes Booth to pull the trigger. Yet there is another dimension to the assassin story, one less well-known, one obscured by the magnitude of his crime, a hidden history that played its part in goading John Wilkes to the brink of endurance, speeding him on the course to disaster. Throughout his short life, John had one rival, one competitor. For most of his 26 years, Lincoln's killer lived in the shadow of an older brother, Edwin Booth, a dramatic genius who achieved colossal national celebrity just as the Civil War began. Together, Edwin and John Wilkes Booth enacted one of the strangest stories in American history. Edwin's name is forgotten now, buried by John's infamous deed, but a century ago he was the actor king, the biggest, most influential star on the American stage. Edwin won greatness while yet a teenager. American presidents praised and befriended him. He was worshipped by the national press. Far from being a peripheral figure, this older brother dominated John Wilkes's life. Theirs was a bitter rivalry. As Edwin and John came of age, dueling ambition and professional animosity made them adversaries. But when war came, politics tore them apart. My Thoughts Be Bloody brings the hidden history of the Booth brothers to light, telling how one became our country's most notorious assassin, and the other, 19th century America's most beloved star. Edwin and John were heirs to a theatrical dynasty, one established by their father, London-born Shakespearean actor Junius Brutus Booth. Junius was the toast of the English stage, but an adultery scandal forced him and his mistress to flee to America. Junius achieved legendary status on these shores, admired by such great Americans as John Adams, Andrew Jackson, and frontier hero Sam Houston. From childhood, John and Edwin could not help but feel the lure of the theater. The stage-struck brothers were rivals for their father's approval, each hoping to train for a life on stage. But Junius chose Edwin, who showed early signs of genius, to be his only apprentice. John Wilkes, who had no talent for acting, went to boarding school. Everything changed for the family in 1851. Edwin and his father made a dangerous tour of the California gold fields, where actors were in great demand. But Junius died on the journey. Loss of this wage earner plunged the Booths into poverty. John Wilkes left school. Acting became a financial necessity for both brothers, their best way of earning a living. The death of their father, a national star, left an empty throne. Each son wanted to claim Booth's legacy of fame. Edwin and John Wilkes became competitors. Despite a lack of training and scant talent, John struggled for years to make a success on stage. When war came, he did not enlist with the Confederacy as his politics inclined him to, but launched a career as a leading man. John earned dismal reviews from critics who compared his clumsy work to Edwin's genius. Worse, Edwin did not wish to share the limelight with a rival. He barred John from acting in lucrative theatrical territory like New York City. The war years brought Edwin Booth to the pinnacle of success. He owned his own theater on Broadway and a mansion in Manhattan. He donated thousands of dollars to the Union war effort, hobnobbed with members of Lincoln's administration and became the first to perform Hamlet 100 nights in a row, a triumph that made headlines even in wartime. The brothers' divergent paths, Edwin's an upward race to wealth and fame, John's a downward spiral into disappointment and obscurity, kept pace 
with the hardening of their opposite political views and the growth of their mutual dislike. At times, John humiliatingly was forced to ask his older brother for housing and for cash loans to supplement his unsteady income. Later on, the younger brother's resentment would erupt in verbal outbursts, even physical blows aimed at pro-union Edwin. In 1864, Lincoln himself seemed to crown Edwin's victory. The White House made special arrangements for the older Booth brother to perform Hamlet and other plays during official Washington, D.C. celebrations of the third anniversary of the president's inaugural. That same year, John abandoned the stage, first to drill for oil in Pennsylvania, hoping to strike it rich, but ultimately to join the Brotherhood of Conspiracy. My Thoughts Be Bloody sets John Wilkes Booth, the actor, squarely in the context of his bitterly divided family. It revives the extraordinary character of Edwin Booth and plants him once more at center stage. This book tells a new story, the tale of two brothers, rival sons of a famous father, who each played their parts in a national tragedy.